How's it going, guys? We have an easy GIT slash histo question for step one. A nearly identical one shows up on one of the NBME assessments. All right, so you need to know this. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now let's start the clip. 28-year-old woman. She has a one-month history of diarrhea with occasional blood. On admission to hospital, she develops peritoni peritonitis and dies. Autopsy shows a punctate opening and a thickened loop of small bowel. There are several lengths of small and large bowel that demonstrate intraluminal fibrotic strictures. A photomicrograph is shown, and we have a histo image, which I'll explain in a moment. Question wants to know uh, which of the following is most likely explanation for these findings. Let's just walk the answers. We'll go backwards. Choice C, mesenteric venous thrombosis. Wrong fucking answer. I've seen this once as a correct answer on an offline uh, uh, step one assessment. So you need to know that the portal vein goes to the liver and that the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein coalesce they merge to form the portal. Therefore, if you have cirrhosis, where you have portal hypertension, you will also get increased pressure slash stasis in the splenic and mesenteric veins. So that stasis in the superior mesenteric vein increased the risk for superior mesenteric venous thrombosis, okay? So the question I saw was a patient on the MDMA, was a patient who had cirrhosis, so that's your stasis, and then they had adenocarcinoma unrelated, I think it was pulmonary, uh, that's hypercoagulable state. Okay, so hypercoagulable state, venous stasis, endothelial damage, Verkhoff, Verkhoff triad for thrombosis. And they said uh, that there was a reddish bluish discoloration of uh, the colon. The point is, it's the wrong fucking answer. Choice D, mesenteric ischemia, wrong answer. This is a long fucking discussion. Okay, where we talk about acute versus chronic mesenteric ischemia. The long story short is that chronic mesenteric ischemia is going to be atherosclerosis. They're going to give you abdominal pain one to two hours after meals that will sound like a duodenal ulcer. Okay, but rather than a 29 year old dude from Indonesia who can get H. pylori causing duodenal ulcers, they're going to give you 69 year old who has massive uh, cardiovascular history, diabetes, intermittent claudication, history of cabbage, coronary artery bypass grafting, and who gets uh, abdominal pain one to two hours after meals. That's chronic mesenteric ischemia, okay? Atherosclerosis of the SMA or IMA, and you're going to do uh, mesenteric angiography to diagnose. Acute mesenteric ischemia is going to be severe abdominal pain out of proportion to the physical exam in a patient who has atrial fibrillation, where you get a left atrial mural thrombus that launches off, can go to the brain, cause stroke, can go to the lower legs lower legs, what the fuck am I saying? Go to the legs and cause acute limb ischemia. And it can also go to the SMA or IMA and cause uh, acute mesenteric ischemia. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, ischemic colitis, wrong answer, often confused with mesenteric ischemia. Ischemic colitis will be a, uh, an older patient who has a significant cardiovascular history. However, rather than abdominal pain one to two hours after meals, as with chronic mesenteric ischemia, they'll give you just blood in the stool. That's it. Okay. And this is due to ischemic ulcers of the watershed areas in the large bowel. Okay. The recto sigmoid junction and the splenic flexure. Okay. You can get uh, ischemic ulcers. So blood in the stool in a patient with a massive cardiovascular history, that's ischemic colitis. In contrast, belly pain one to two hours after meals and massive cardiovascular history, that's chronic mesenteric ischemia. Wrong fucking answer. Actually, I will be an asshole and just quickly say that we do colonoscopy to diagnose ischemic colitis, where it was mesenteric and geography for chronic mesenteric ischemia, as I noted. I just want to make that important contrast. Now we get into the heart of the question, which is Crohn disease versus ulcerative colitis. The, the diagnosis here is Crohn. You're staring at uh, non caseating granulomas. You need to know that on biopsy of affected segments of, uh, well, it can go mouth to anus for Crohn, okay? Anywhere mouth to anus but they want you to know on biopsy of affected regions of the GI tract, you can get a non caseating granulomas, very high yield. You don't see these in ulcerative colitis, okay? And also they say a punctate opening and a thickened loop of small bowel. The implication is that it's transmural, okay? Crone is transmural, can cause fistulae, okay? Openings within the GI tract, all right? Ulcerative colitis, it's not transmural, okay? It doesn't affect all the layers. And also, here they say, uh, interesting wording, they say several lengths of large and small bowel. Two points. Number one, uh, ulcerative colitis doesn't affect the small bowel. It's just rectum ascending. So we said Crohn is mouth to anus, can present as a mouth ulcer, okay, in a patient who has bloody diarrhea. So mouth to anus and Crohn, 
rectum ascending in ulcer clays. So you don't get small bowel involvement in ulcer clays. And also several lengths uh, implies that we have skip lesions. Okay, so Crohn is classically skip lesions uh, where we can get these intraluminal fibrotic strictures, all right? This, don't confuse this with ad surgical adhesions, okay? It's different. That's more step two stuff, but you can get fibrotic adhesions prior surgery, uh, whereas intraluminal fibrotic strictures is Crohn disease, okay? Ulcerative colitis, I mean, you're going to get a loss of the haustra when you do a, um, a barium enema, okay? So it's a lead pipe appearance, whereas Crohn, you get string sign, okay? But the uh, non casein and granulomas here for Crohn, very high yield. We can do a lengthy discussion. Extra intestinal manifestations, of course, primary uh, sclerosing cholangitis, okay, more often seen in UC, can sometimes be seen in Crohn. Talk about things like uh, anterior uveitis, erythema nodosum, okay, pyoderma gangrenosum with UC. So we can make this a 26 minute discussion and waste our fucking time, but I'm not gonna do that. So you know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.